Thanks a lot for that. So I think uh, uh, wonderful. I was actually joined in a little earlier, and I was very fortunate enough to catch the previous session and and really look at how companies are, the discussions going around about how important it is to look at your customer journeys and all of that. And I think um, this is going to be a, a slightly a, a different take. I think it's it's more of an industry take, and we take a step back. Um, so what we've done, I think, just to set context for what I'm going to speak over the next uh, 15, 20 minutes or is is to talk you through what customer experience should be looking like. And we, and we had a lot of these discussions. I think when a, a very pertinent question came up in the previous one is why are companies not doing exactly what their customers want? But the, the, the other question to ask is what do your customers actually want today? So this probably takes uh, a perspective of that. Uh, it also takes another perspective as well, uh, the perspective being is the fact that we've just seen the pandemic in a lot of countries. I, so I'm calling you, of course, uh, from India right now. Um, the pandemic is at, at full force and, and most customers now, of course, are online, are digital. So what has happened? What has changed? Have businesses changed? The customer behaviors have changed. So we're going to look at all of that. And we did a, a, a survey report, we used a company to go out there and talk to several customer service leaders across the globe. We specifically spoke to around 200 uh, customer service leaders across Southeast Asia. And what I'm going to show you is some of the findings of that report. Of course, uh, all of the, all of you who are joining this session right now will uh, receive a copy of this entire report itself. But I'm going to pick out a few aspects of that and sort of walk you through uh, some of these discussion points, right? Of course, uh, thanks, Anisha, for the introduction. So my name is Sandeep, and I take care of uh, marketing for the Southeast Asian region at Freshworks. A quick snapshot for, for the ones who don't know who Freshworks is, we're the company who've been around for a little more than 10 years now. Um, we've got more than 50,000 paying customers, offices all across the globe. In fact, now uh, is a running joke that we talk about not just 13 offices, but probably 3,500 offices because most of us have not seen the office or even gone near to a physical office for more than a year now. Um, we have 12 products and these products keep building out as we speak today. A little bit about Freshworks. So we're a company that basically creates a customer, basically in the space of customer engagement, we call our product the customer for life engagement platform. So we've got a suite of products that help our customers deliver moments of wow. Um, one of our products in Freshworks called Fresh Desk, which is a customer support software, is named a visionary in the Gartner quadrant. It's probably the only product or the first product to be named a visionary at the Gartner quadrant itself. So. Uh, a quick glimpse of some of the customers whom we work with across the ASEAN region. As I mentioned, uh, we work with a lot of companies across the globe, but a few companies we thought we'd just quickly highlight to show you whom we work with. Great. So let me just walk you through uh, what I'm going to discuss or talk about in the next few minutes. One, of course, is the findings of the, the larger findings of the report. We're also going to deep uh, talk about what's happening in Southeast Asia as far as these findings are concerned. And what are some of the key takeaways for all of you who are joining us today? Uh, we'll also have a Q&A session, but feel free to drop in your questions during the course of this session as well. I'm happy to take them, and I'll take them right at the end. So to begin, we're going to run a, a few polls as well. So if you're on the chat bot and, and if you're able to access the poll right now, feel free. I'll have the team from uh, the events team also help me up with the poll. So the first question I just want to get a sense from the audience who have joined here is, which of the following is true regarding the state of customer service in 2020? So what do you believe uh, is the fact here? One, customer expectations have increased, number one. Two, being customer service budgets have increased significantly. Three, customer service leaders have embraced work from home. Or four, is it all of the above? Um, so a few ways, either you could, there could be a poll that comes up right now, or feel free to drop in your response. Uh, so I hope all of you are participating in that poll and key in your uh, answers. Um, we will, of course, uh, take up um, the uh, poll once uh, Sandeep is done with the presentation. I think there seems to be um, um, a freeze uh, in Sandeep's um, uh, camera. Uh, but uh, a request uh, to everybody uh, to join into the poll, answer the poll wholeheartedly. And uh, also a request uh, to all of you uh, who are watching to fill up the feedback form. We really value your feedback. 
and uh, we incorporate uh, all that uh, you have to say, your suggestions, to try and make our um, uh, events uh, more informative, more interactive. So we would request all of you uh, to fill up the feedback form as well. So it seems uh, there is a little bit of a connectivity issue uh, with uh, uh, Sandeep, uh, but uh, I'm sure you saw the poll questions and uh, do uh, key in your answers. Also, if you have questions uh, from our speakers, uh, uh, do stay back towards the end. Uh, we have an open discussion where we will be taking up uh, some of these questions that you have and our speakers will be happy uh, to answer them. I think Sandeep is back with us. Oh yes, uh, my bad. Yeah, I think the, the work from home life got the better of me, but yeah, I'm back. Sorry about that. Yes, we were on the poll actually. Oh, okay, fantastic. Let's just uh, go back to the poll. If you can, if uh, yeah, if, if people can put up their results or if you can share me some of the findings, that would be lovely. Um, I think we'll take the poll. Um, we will still wait for the answers to come in. Uh, Cindy, okay. In the interim, okay. uh, kindly go on, and then yeah. we'll share them once we collate it. Okay, sounds good. That sounds good. sounds like a plan. So, uh, in terms of when, so when we actually ran this a little bit and tried to understand how this would look from uh, from the report itself. So when we actually went out there, here are some of the key findings that came out for similar questions that were asked. One was, of course, 70% of people believe that customer service expectations had increased, um, number one. Two, the other part was, and the second part was a little obvious because 67% believe that budgets were also increasing as well because I think companies realized the great, there would be greater investment in terms of technology to help companies deliver better experiences as well because of, of point number one. And three, I think a lot of customer service leaders, especially in Southeast Asia, were very quick uh, to embrace some kind of a remote or even a hybrid atmosphere itself in terms of their working models. So essentially, most of them in terms of, I think to answer the, the larger question, yes, all of the above, it, it, it felt like expectations were increased. But there's another point I'd like to, to draw into discussion here. Of course, point number one, whilst uh, a lot of the cases customer expectations have had increased. The other point that also came into play is there was a greater sense of empathy that customers had towards companies. It was very interesting. It, it's sort of uh, uh, against the, the response that we gave earlier, but that possibly is, could, could be in relation to specific industries. For example, if you're a company dealing in financial transactions or banking, I think the general level of expectations would be high because here you had a lot of a generation of people who probably started using uh, banking apps and transaction and payment apps for the first time. And when they had some sort of a discrepancy between the transaction, they would get a little more agitated. So I think it is very industry driven as well to sort of look at that point. But let's just go in a little bit within this and try to understand how that looks. So yeah, as I mentioned earlier on, another aspect of this would be customers have, have, have had, of course, become a little more demanding during the crisis as well. Uh, here we have customer expectations, um, as we see on the previous number as well. Customer empathy also seems to be on the high. On the third part is also in the line of uh, customer churn. So as I mentioned, the other fact as well, the fact that within the industry metrics, so there were certain industries, even in the previous conversation, we heard that as well, that took a really bad hit as a result of the pandemic. So there was significant customer churn as well during the course of that. But what we also try to do is try to understand this from the perspective of how does this, uh, this compare to the larger global markets as well? So here we have Southeast Asia, whilst we have a significant increase in uh, customer expectations per se. In some of the other markets, for example, the EU, it seemed to be that customer expectations were not necessarily on the high, uh, particularly is what this is saying. Now, the other bit is also to look at in terms of volume. So now we understand expectations are high. Most companies have gone digital or probably already digital they've had to deal with a significant amount of volume that came in through. And almost 83% of customer service leaders said that support volumes across channels had seen a significant increase. Most of you joining here today probably are on multiple channels that there are, but you can see a significant number that's going up. What was surprising to me potentially was also the phone channel. Typically, I would have expected a lot of people going on live chat and messaging and social media perhaps, but phone also continued to be a significantly high channel as well uh, in the current situation. Now, the other question we asked, and we did a small comparison between uh, Australia and New Zealand region as well, is to understand what are the biggest challenges that customer service teams were facing during this? And here are some of the top answers that came out, of course, 
uh, both the regions have different answers. One, of course, within Southeast Asia, just a couple of one I'll pick out here. One is, of course, is adapting to the shift in channel mix. So whilst the traditional channels were still working, you probably had a significant proportion of customers choosing a particular channel because they probably saw greater response to that. Also, making process changes on their technology platforms because now we had a greater deal of volume coming in. At what point could people bring in automations and things like that to really help them out? So you can see a, 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 almost a contrasting difference between what Southeast Asia were considering the biggest challenges versus what Australia and New Zealand were com considering as biggest challenges, right? So here, uh, the biggest challenge there is because of, of greater customer churn, how could they operate with reduced staff now? Do they invest in more technology? What, what can they do? Um, second can also be how do you track productivity and performance? So different kinds of changes. Of course, there are a few that are fairly common across both the countries or both the regions per se, but this is what that came out from that. The third bit to look at all of this is also to understand how were budgets impacted. Whilst I think most companies had a greater plan of looking at their budgets within the region or looking at potential increase, um, Southeast Asia, for example, 68% of customer service leaders saw an increase in budget versus what happened in the previous year. And I think overall, the average is almost around 11%. So there was a positive intake in terms of the budgetary flow. In terms of staffing, as I mentioned, customer churn was on the high in the region per se. And again, this has to be a, a very industry-specific kind of situation, not necessarily a common statement across the region as well. Okay, we'll, we'll do the second poll question. And of course, uh, we'll, as Anisha said, we'll take the answers in the end. But another question to ask all of you is, what are some of the critical tools uh, that are really helping you, uh, that help you through the crisis? And of course, are continuing to help you as you are today. One, being live chat and messaging. Two, being greater workforce management. Three, as an organization, collaboration tools, because now most people are perhaps working in home or have some kind of a hybrid atmosphere. How is that working? For uh, self-service portals, do we have well-built self-service portals where your employees themselves or your customers can come in and get things done? Um, and, and five, internal knowledge management systems. So yeah, uh, do try and answer this poll. We'd love to hear from you in terms of what tools actually support you and actually work well for you. Now, moving on, uh, in that same question, so of course, any question that I ask you here is kind of almost on the survey as well. We asked the same question to the audience. We asked our customer service leaders, what did they feel were the most important tools that really worked for them? One being uh, the top five critically important tools in this particular order was live chat and messaging. It's quite obvious that this would be one of the higher things. Workforce management software also became very, very important because we were all in a remote atmosphere. And the same thing goes for collaboration tools. In fact, a lot of the times, and this is conversations in a previous round table that I came up, is that whilst collaboration tools were always in existence in some shape or form, the, the kind of adoption that it took over the last one or two years was fairly significant, really. Uh, the fourth part is, of course, uh, self-service portal and, of course, internal knowledge management systems. So really, the larger piece to look at is one of the biggest, the biggest takeaways here is that 44% of customer service leaders saw live chat really working well for them, whether it's live chat uh, as a human being interface or live chat initially with a bot and perhaps a human being interface as well was really working well for most companies at this point. So I think if I had to put things in a larger perspective in terms of a summary, right? So I think one of the key things that came out in all of this is that as companies move forward, uh, one thing companies know, uh, some companies that you see some of the big tech companies have already taken uh, almost 100% work from home indefinitely. Uh, they just made their entire offices like that. A lot of companies today are thinking of that. And I think companies will start beginning to think that way, to think, should we continue to, do we have a physical office? Of course, certain industries, it might not be possible, but can we have some kind of a hybrid atmosphere between a physical and uh, people working remotely and whatnot? And a lot of companies are thinking on those lines as we speak. So investing in remote-ready tech is the way forward. Um, one, we also understand Self-service is going to be a key uh, metric as well. So what kind of technology can I build for my internal employees uh, that can help them? For example, if I have some trouble with my laptop, how can I get it solved today because my IT team doesn't sit anywhere near me? What can happen in those instances? Two, uh, investing in customer service platforms, whether it's Freshdesk or any other platform that one should invest in, 
that becomes the key because as we've already seen earlier, one of the key points I mentioned earlier on as well, customer expectations are increasing and it's not going to go down as we speak. In fact, you're going to get a lot more users, a lot more people using platforms like these for the first time. So you need something that can help you track, capture these customer requests, customer challenges, problems, and whatnot. And you need a platform. Ideally, you need a unifying platform that can connect all your channels, be it email, phone, uh, chat, and whatnot, social media as well, into one place so that you're delivering those seamless experiences to customers. And the third part is, of course, thinking about, and we've constantly had this chat, and I think the good thing about Southeast Asia is we're far ahead in terms of some of the other regions as well that's trying to look at AI chatbots and automation and whatnot, is to think about what role can AI and chatbots work in your organization? Can it help streamline um, your processes? Can it help uh, answer, for example, the chatbot example is very simple. Can the bot be the front end of that chatbot before it comes into a human being? Because your volumes are going to increase significantly as you keep moving on as well. So I think three key areas for companies to think about, and 72% happen to be coincidentally the same number that came across these three parts. Outside of all of this, of course, we covered a few things, and I want to leave you with the three key things to think about your company. If you're running, if you're a customer service leader, running a customer support operation, or you're part of an organization that deals with a lot of customer support, something to think about, of course, we're all embracing whatever this work from home life is going to be like. And of course, it's a hybrid, it's a complete remote atmosphere. We don't know. It's, it depends on the organization and whatnot. Two, support requests will continue to increase. It's, it's not going to go down. It's just going to go up. In fact, there probably will be newer channels that people find uh, a need to come into your organization. And three, and I think very, very important part of all of this, and you may not need necessarily software to do all of this, but the third part is really try and spend time looking after your people. Now, several companies today have taken great steps in trying to keep their employees engaged, whether it's um, a physical or mental well-being per se. And I think it's very important, right, with, with customers, people working continuously for long periods and long hours and dealing sometimes with some irate customers or, uh, and whatnot and complex queries. How can we support our people as well? So three things to keep in mind uh, in terms of what kind of technology you're investing, how you're going to go about it. Uh, and of course, the most important asset, all of that, your employees, making sure that they are happy and they have the right kind of tools necessary that can support them and help them uh, deliver greater experiences, right? So I think, I think I'm, I'm done with that. And then of course, um, feel free to get in touch with us if you'd like to understand how we can help uh, with your customer service operations, how we can get better with that. Do let us know and we'd be happy to get in touch. Right. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me yeah. take up uh, the poll uh, answers, uh, the results oh. that we've got. So uh, to the question, which of the following was true regarding the state of customer service in 2020? Customer expectations have increased. 50% uh, voted in favor of this that customer expectations have increased. Customer service budgets have increased significantly. 25% agree to this. Customer service leaders have embraced uh, work from home. Nobody uh, agrees to that. Uh, and the 25% have agreed to all of the above. Uh, then yeah. uh, to the other question, which of the following was true regarding uh, the state of customer service? Uh, okay, this we've, uh, we've covered this. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, what are the critical tools that helped you the most through this crisis? So live chat and messaging is zero percent. Nobody believes in this. Workforce management, 100% people believe that this is what really helped them during the crisis. Uh, Self-service uh, portal and internal knowledge management did not garner any votes. So everybody, I think, 100% uh, believed in workforce management. Uh, are you interested in free customer service consultation with FreshBooks experts? 67% uh, are saying yes. Uh, so I guess- that's good to know. You're going to be pretty busy. Uh, yeah. Soon enough. Uh, thank Fantastic. you so much. Uh, for thank you, your Anisha. Presentation. Thanks a lot, Anisha, and and and, and hope all of you, if, if any, if you have any specific questions around the presentation or the report or some of our findings, feel free to reach out. I'm also access very accessible over LinkedIn. You can just my first name, Sandeep uh, John, on LinkedIn, and you can connect with me. And happy to chat a little bit more about the report, the findings, and and share those details with you as well. Thank you, Anisha.
Thank you, Sandeep, and uh, thank you to all our participants for uh, giving us their feedback on the poll. Please continue to do uh, that, uh, interact uh, with our speakers, uh, fill in the feedback form. We really appreciate your participation here as well.